Today is August 9th. It's the 222nd day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. On this day in 1974, Vice President Gerald Ford is sworn in as president following Richard Nixon's resignation in the wake of the Watergate scandal. Gerald Ford is born Leslie Lynch King Jr. in Omaha, Nebraska in 1913. His father, Leslie King Sr., is an abusive husband and after he threatens his wife, Dorothy, with a butcher's knife, she divorces him shortly after Leslie Jr. is born. A few years later, Dorothy remarries, marrying a salesman named Gerald Rudolph Ford. Though he never legally adopts Dorothy's son, they begin calling their son Gerald Rudolph Ford Jr., a name that Gerald Ford Jr. makes legal in 1935. Ford is an All-American kid, captain of the high school football team, an Eagle Scout, and a star football player at the University of Michigan. He graduates from Yale Law School in 1941, and at the end of that year, enlists in the Navy after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Ford serves in the Pacific during the war, and after the war, runs for Congress in Michigan's 5th District. Gerald Ford begins his 25-year career in the House of Representatives in 1948. He serves on the Warren Commission investigating the assassination of President Kennedy and is elected House Minority Leader in 1964. Ford is well-respected in the House as a fair leader, one who is honest, affable, and hardworking. In 1973, Nixon's Vice President Spiro Agnew resigns in the midst of a tax evasion, money laundering, bribery scandal that dates back to his days as governor of Maryland. In accordance with the 25th Amendment, ratified just six years earlier in 1967, the president is to nominate Agnew's successor to be confirmed by both houses of Congress. Nixon consults with top congressional leadership as to who to nominate, and they give him only one option, Gerald Ford. In October of 1973, Nixon nominates Ford for vice president, and in November of that same year, Ford is overwhelmingly confirmed by both the House and the Senate. Spiro Agnew isn't the only top federal official embroiled in a scandal at that time. President Nixon is, of course, knee-deep in the Watergate scandal in 1973. And nine months later, at the beginning of August 1974, another compromising secret tape recording surfaces. It's a devastating tape, the smoking gun as it's called. It's the evidence in the scandal that will lead to either impeachment or resignation. Seven days later, President Richard Nixon resigns the presidency, effective noon on this day in 1974. Nixon is the first president in American history to resign the office, and on this day he climbs aboard the presidential helicopter Marine One, turns and raises his hands in the air one last time, before flying off to the family home in California. And moments later, inside the White House East Room, Vice President Gerald Ford is sworn in as the 38th President of the United States. His will be the shortest presidency in history that does not end in the death of a president. He reluctantly runs for election in 1976, but loses to Jimmy Carter in large part because of the controversial pardon Ford gives Nixon a month after he's sworn in to replace him. When he is sworn in on this day in 1974, Gerald Ford is the first person to assume the presidency upon the resignation of his predecessor and without having been voted into either of the presidential or vice presidential offices. 
Mr. Vice President, are you prepared to take the oath of office as President of the United States? I am, sir. If you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of President of the United States. The office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. There are 144 days left in the year. On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. My fellow Americans, our long national nightmare is over. Our Constitution works. Our great republic is a government of laws and not of men. Here, the people rule. If you have not chosen me by secret ballot, neither have I gained office by any secret promises. I have not campaigned either for the presidency or the vice presidency. I have not subscribed to any partisan platform. I am indebted to no man and only to one woman my dear wife, as I begin this very difficult job. I have not sought this enormous responsibility, but I will not shirk it. Those who nominated and confirmed me as vice president were my friends and are my friends. They were of both parties, elected by all the people, and acting under the Constitution in their name. It is only fitting, then, that I should pledge to them and to you that I will be the president of all the people. God helping me, I will not let you down. Thank you.